you all for coming and praying. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, here is a lot for 48.8 in the west end of Galveston. JR's listing. 20,920 in Indian Beach. He told me he had uh, yes. two or three people looking at it already before he went on the market. Oh, okay. Great hey, stock photos. Yes, ma'am. Oh, there it goes. Wait, but don't you have to have a photo of the lot? Okay. I mean, six of the lot or no? No. Six photos. Just have to have six photos. 1313 Page in the East End, 249, Mega Cornelius. Ninety-seven fourteen South Rice in Meyerland, three sixty-five Terry Kaminsky. Oh my God! Let's see at Meyerland. Eighteen thirty-seven Radcliffe, uh, Radcliffe. Sorry, did I say Rad? Uh -huh. Radcliffe. <laughs> uh, three sixty-five Stephen Worrell. <coughs> what was the price on that? 365. This is in Riverway Green. I'm not sure where that is. It's Riceville. It's in Cottage. It's Riceville. 1704 Ovid in Sawyer Heights, 415. Marty Warren. Forty four oh eight Dixon in Magnolia Grove, four seventy five Rosemary Stiglitz, Ice Military. <coughs> Oh. oh, okay. You're getting the feed. Yes, ma'am. 6417 Westcott in Camp Logan, 529. Angela? Okay, so this is a really great house in Camp Logan. It's, it's in a gated community um, of five, so maintenance fees are really low. 425 a year, covers gate and landscaping. Wow. Um, this one is elevator capable as well. It's got an extra den space, um, mm -hmm. which is really nice. And uh, it's like a little over 3,000 square feet, really good price for the location. And you know, it's really nice being off Westcott because it's it's an interior unit, so you really don't hear any noise at all. And, and also you get that street parking right there. So it's really convenient if you have a lot of guests or you've got third, third car or whatever, um, you know, block, a couple blocks to Memorial Park and great neighbors. I'm one of them. Okay. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> 1217 Dunleavy um, in Hyde Park, 529 Mike Spear. This looks like such a cool place. Okay. And Dunleavy's a busy street, but if you, I went on Google Maps to look at this. The driveway is humongous and it's on the um, side street. So you have a two car garage and parking for at least three or four more That's cars. Nice. Right on, four more, right on the corner there. So it really makes a difference. Yeah. 
213-260 Lady Bird in Magnolia Reserve, 530 Stephen Worrell. Is that cute? Is Magnolia Grove, is that Rice Military? Magnolia? No. no. I think this is in Magnolia. It's in Magnolia. It is in the country. Yeah, this is in Montgomery, in Magnolia, Montgomery County. Thirty four ninety two square feet. Sixty eight sixty five Stratfordshire. Uh, 535, David Atkins. Saratoga Springs um, in Lights on Eldridge, 5799, Sally Kvichek is in Side Fair. Seven fifty nine Gramercy in Braves Heights, five eighty eight Stormy Hayes. It has a guest house. <laughs> White Oak, uh, 649.9 in the Heights, Yvonne Meyer. <laughs> Bond Bridge Way in Royal Oaks Country Club, 669, Sandy Parker. Twenty-one eleven Stone Walk in Sage Town, six eighty-nine. Uh, Betsy Van Brook. On Sage. Fifty six oh six Venice in Rice Military, six ninety nine eight. Vicky? So we have two of these left, and we dropped the price of total uh, over 100 k So it's priced really, really well. It's the lowest price for new construction in Rice Military, and uh, it's on the Curb and Gutter Street, very uh, dead end, um, so very close, one block of Memorial. Um, it has um, a game room. Uh, Huge covered terrace and beautiful finishes. 
75 Merrick in Ayrshire, 750 Mark of Vinson. <clears throat> Um, she made them on PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. 1302 Story in Westview Terrace, 789, Jennifer Lucio. Seven eighteen Diamond Leaf, uh, seven ninety nine Susan Boss. Oh. Seven Six oh six Roy Street in Rice Military, eight twenty five Vicky. Okay, this is uh, the end unit of uh, the project that we have uh, on Roy Street. It's um, commercial uh, windows. They just put twenty seven thousand dollar film on the windows, so it uh, it prevents from uh, getting your furniture, the flooring, UV rays, and adds privacy. Um, it's just um, a gorgeous home. Um, beautiful uh, finishes. It has a roof terrace um, with uh, a game room off of it. Gorgeous. Private driveway. Mm -hmm. Really pretty. And the ability to add the East and Rick store as a new partner. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. 4054 North Bracewood in Ayrshire, 875 Nadia Karen. Six oh one Highland Street in the Heights, eight seventy five John Durfee. So, so cute. So cute. Mm -hmm. Yellow houses look happy. And with red doors. Oh my god, I think they're so cute. <laughs> the little picket fence around. So cute. So heightsy. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Heightsy. 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 Design. Yes. They're happy. Yep. Friendly yellows are happy. Happy house. What's coming? Mm -hmm. So cute. A white picket fence. Forty eleven Betsy Lane in the Highland Village, nine twenty five in the Andrew Tucson.
Probably what's the size of that house? Interesting, it doesn't say. You couldn't find it. Huh. Wow, left it out. <laughs> Have a good age, Ken. <laughs> uh, yeah, interesting, it doesn't even say. Okay. Maybe there's a confusion. I thought I missed it. Yeah. Square footage blank. Maybe it's in dispute. Square footage. <laughs> 1505 Elman in Montrose, a million two ninety five. Danny, please tell us. This is probably one of the most unique properties I've ever visited. It's also built extremely, extremely temporary. It kind of looks like you're in the Indiana Jones movie when you're in your house. Look at that. Uh, leather, leather floors, leather walls, and then the leather. This is the. Is this a door? That's the front door to the. Outside four here is the glass front door. And everybody can walk in and you walk in and see that staircase without the railing. Wow. Um, amazing place. Oh, I can use staircase. Danny, any elevator capability? No elevator, I don't think so. No. Just Nowhere? two story. Huh? Just two stories in the elevator. What is this on the wall? So he had those are columns that he had a hand handmade at the home yeah, like house. That library cool. can go up a little bit. Go up the pictures up and show you the door. The library is a hidden secret door. Oh. Up, uh, Over here? Yeah, go up a little further. Go there you go. So let's picture that right there, that door closes and it. it's just a wall. Oh. In the library. Oh. That's oh, great. kind of cool. I know, right? I need to hide my library. Everybody should hide their library. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what is, wait, is that a bed? Yes. No, that's a bed. Is, is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah. Is that a I thought you said is that so a bed. Like a pallet. <laughs> like a platform <laughs> bed. Are those pillars stone? Are those pillars stone? Are those pillars stone? Are those pillars stone? Or what is what? Yeah, they're concrete. Man made there at the house, or built the house, and then he threw them all away. And the mold built and threw away the one else using that mold. Okay. Threw them all away. <laughs> so, what are you going to do in open house? No, I didn't. It was pretty empty. Yeah. I thought it was today, 12 to 2. Come see it. Oh, okay, that's okay. Uh, very cool. Eleven six zero three Haversham in Bunker Hill, a million four ninety nine. Susan Boss. Twenty twenty five Dryden in Southgate, a million five ninety. David Atkins. This is a realist. Twelve one oh three Beauregard in Memorial Forest, a million nine Karen Harbor. Karen's in Austin having her birthday. She's still in Austin. They had Kimberly had a baby on Friday. Oh, baby Friday. boy. Aww. Versus versus Sunday. Oh, right. <laughs> so, 
209 Fleetway, uh, million nine forty nine five. Guess it's a lot. Forty thousand one sixty two. One from those arrows. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't say that, did I? It is Con, Con Trestle. Fleetwood Plaza, Memorial Villages. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. it's right off One block Memorial west Village. of Voss. Memorial Voss. I know. That's a good look. Fifty-five, fifty-five Del Monte in the St. James, a million nine nine nine. Ina Perlman, unit twenty-four oh one. Gorgeous. Didn't realize they had that kind of property at St. James. Obviously, you know, we know they can do that. Yeah, really nice. Oh, that's Oh my gosh, look at that. Beautiful. Wow. Two stories. Yeah. There's your elevator. Your penthouses are two stories. With an elevator. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and cave. <laughs> That's a good building. Oh, nice. yeah. How big is that? Oh, 4835. Yeah. Yeah. How about the um, <coughs> A lot. Oh, yeah. 36, 30. It's high at St. James. <laughs> <laughs> so 3032 San Felipe in River Oaks, two million two fifty. Vicky? This um, is on over uh, almost 13,000 square foot lot. It has a pool, a uh, backyard, <laughs> um, it has a four car up, it has two garages, a total of four spaces, uh, two porta cachets. There's beautiful uh, rooms. They all uh, have uh, views of the backyard and the pool. Um, over four hundred thousand dollars of updates and expansions in the home. Um, a lot of uh, ditches with beautiful views. Um, huge. Uh, we've done master uh, master class over the pool and uh, courtyard. First floor of uh, first floor bedroom in addition to the master. It has a um, beautiful Sotheby's uh, chandelier, Venetian um, chandelier, um, two of a kind in the world. And, um, wow. upstairs with three additional bedrooms upstairs. In total, it has four baths um, and one a uh, half bath. It's right across from River Oaks Elementary. This is one of the two car garages. We um, set it up as a studio. Uh, the owner is a, a major collector, so we went to his house and showed some of his furnishings to bring over. Because most of it is collectible, collectible uh, items. Um, so it's just really well. Beautiful. 5310 Willers Way in Del Monte, 2299 Suzanne Richardson.
No, that looks like it's up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was like, what is wrong? Back in. <laughs> there's some finishes in our hands. <laughs> Can you find out who the builder is on this? Builder is Live Oak. And the Cosmopolitan unit 1802 for two million three ninety five. Okay, the HOA on this one's eighteen hundred. <laughs> so I'm having an open house there tomorrow night from five thirty to seven thirty, and we're gonna have outdoor spritzes and outdoor tables and. I thought the office could get together and we could all hang out and talk shop. You know, it's a beautiful view and beat the traffic. So, and it's free valet parking. It's beautiful up there, and I think that the new tram will be ready probably by Christmas, so you can just hop, hop and go shop or eat or whatever night you get call it. Today Christmas, huh? That's I think it looks like it's going to be ready. By wow. So, Christmas. but this this place has been completely gutted and redone in 2018. Wow. <laughs> It's 2008. It's beautiful. I mean, it's, the sky just messed wow. up. It's really pretty. pretty. It's really pretty. Oh, the master bathroom is like the bathroom. Yeah, it's nice. Beautiful. Yeah. So is that view going to get blocked? That, no, no. It's not that direction. all facing downtown. Huh? And the, since the building juts out over Post Oak, you can look straight down Post Oak. That wow. other building is going to be working on the right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and the, the chandelier is amazing. And the walls are like this suede cork. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Really neat. And the Italian floors. And all the closets. Yeah. That's like a dressing area. And that's a mess about. I need to check this one. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So y'all are welcome to come tomorrow night. Five thirty seven thirty. Free ballet. Yeah. Okay. Who else has a new listing this week? I saw some I won. I love the contemporary. Yes, ma'am. It's not in yet, but I'm getting a a listing in Montrose with an elevator to the fourth floor, and, and it's built in 2015, and it's like, like new. I mean, they they, they repainted everything, but they barely lived in it. So, if anybody has a, somebody that's looking, how much? Seven fifty nine. Grabby. Thirty three hundred square feet. Whoa! With a driveway and a three car garage. Whoa! Nevada. What schools? It's actually good. It's Montes. It's um. Wilson. Wilson Montessori, which is apparently getting very good ratings, right. and Lanier and Lamar. Wow. Wow. Right. wow. I'm sure. So talk to me. Yeah. Hey, anybody else? New listings? New <coughs> listings. Okay, old public. Thank you, thank you, thank you for breakfast. <coughs> come in. Yeah, <laughs> come come stand right here so the camera can catch you. Oh hello. So camera. For everybody. <laughs> 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 what are we talking to? Memorial? Everybody. Oh, this is this picks up and goes to all the offices and to their homes to YouTube. Wow! So you can get everybody. <laughs> okay, hello everyone. Um, I am Stacy Epps. I do marketing at Old Republic, and this is Heather Harvey, Elizabeth Gorski, and Megan McIntyre. And believe it or not, this is only half of our marketing team right across the street. So we have lots of people to help each and every one of you. Um, and I'd just like to say all of you get two gold stars for coming this morning with the weather and it being summer, so that was Yay. half the battle. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, we are on a little bit of a break for classes for the summer, but if you have any requests as far as CE, if something you absolutely need, just let one of us know and we can get that on the schedule for you. Um, and then also, y'all... Um, are getting a new office. Congratulations for that. I know all of you are super excited. And we actually just did a remodel to our office and our conference rooms right across the street. So y'all come by and see us and see our pretty new space. It's easy to get to now that the construction is Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Parking and it's right across the street, 777. You can even see your name right there. <laughs> <laughs> you can't miss us. 
Well, it's so nice to drive down to where you're yeah. in yeah. your garage and you don't get run over by a truck or I know. a bulldozer. That's a plus. Yeah. I don't see any of those I know. I going to be too late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, nice to see you. <laughs> yes. well, then also one more thing. If you haven't, or if you didn't know, we do have an office in Memorial Green. And that's been open for about a year and a half, and it's a beautiful space. And then we also have our Upper Kirby office at 3201 Kirby Drive. And then we have a Heights office coming later this year. So wow. that's super exciting. So wow. we are expanding rapidly as wow. well. So. We also have Kingwood, Champions, Woodlands, um, Conroe, Conroe, Conroe Sugarland. So feel Katie, free, Cypress. Yeah. Feel free to contact Everywhere. us uh, <laughs> if you have any. And you're over um, all those? Yes. 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 So we can be your rep for any of those offices. Yes. So, thank you so much. They're literally across the street from the memorial office. Yeah, they are. Yeah. 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 Which is sad for us. It is. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. two-story contemporary built in the 70s but it has beautiful living and garden it really looks nice will come on probably first week in july where is it it's on john draper okay good <coughs> okay robin before we get to our insurance robin is going to go over a few things that you know we run into things with y'all's deals and we sit there and you know, the three of us could be in the room and all three have different opinions. Imagine. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but we try and get it figured out. So just a few details Robin's going to go over with you because we were confused by one of these things. And right before that, I just wanted to point out um, this change. Yeah. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. um, so you guys remember that wonderful... Um, what was it called? Proposition or chapter yes. ordinance yes. 19, 19, 19, 19 that Marilyn was such a big fan of. So uh -huh. HAR has now created this form, and so we have made it a requirement, and it is in. Uh, it's on the hub under documents. It's also in all of our templates in zip form. <laughs> However, what's interesting is HAR is who created the form, but they don't have it programmed yet to be in transaction desk. Uh, oh. So um, it's in there. <laughs> I it's in there as a PDF. I spoke to the programmer yesterday, and it is on their list to do in a very short amount of time. So as soon as they complete it, I'll put it in all the templates on in Transaction Desk. But if you read this, um, it is a, a good form for your buyer to just be aware if they do plan to build or remodel substantially a structure, whether it's in the 100 or 500 year floodplain. So it is going to kind of put the burden on the seller to have an elevation certificate um, when a survey is done. Okay, so we just wanted to point that out. So it is available for your use now. Has so anyone had any so issue with it? I'm sorry? Um, it's, a, it's a notice for the buyer. So the buyer will need to sign this as part of your buyer contracts, uh, letting them know that if they do plan to build or uh, remodel substantially a structure that's in the 100 or 500 year plane, then um, they may be under this ordinance, which basically states that the first floor has to be within two, um, feet. two feet above the minimum base elevation. So if you have something that just went out of the contract, you have to take it and get them to sign it? Yes. I mean, I think moving forward, it's a buyer's acknowledgement. Yes. We're just realizing that a lot of buyers are not aware of 19, and we're not necessarily bringing it up in conversation. So this will help you remember to bring it up or make them aware of what they might be getting into with remodeling the house. So this is for every, it doesn't matter if it really is in the 100 or 500 year floodplain. It's for every transaction. I think it's good to make. I mean, if it's not today, it probably right. will be tomorrow. Yeah, because it's two feet above the 500-year floodplain, so that's that's going to encompass just about everybody. Is it dealing just with additions, or I mean, when you say remodeling, yeah. I mean, if you go in and kind of redo your kitchen, I mean, is that no, no, no? It's no, when you're, it's when you're adding on. Okay, yeah. when you're adding on. 
It's yeah. an extensive remodel. And there are two websites that are on here. I actually tried to read through both of them yesterday. They're very, very complicated. Um, so that's why we don't want to necessarily tell the buyer, no, there's no issue. They do need to probably talk, of course, to their insurance agent, and they can certainly refer to both of these websites. But I'll tell you, they're not user-friendly at all. The information on there is very legalese. Um, so that's why we want to have this form to make sure that they're at least investigating that. But it's two feet above the 500, not the 100. So that's where I think it's going to get a lot of this. Um, but it is in your zip form templates now. You don't have to go searching for that. But just know in transaction desk, those of you that use that, it's under uh, documents, not forms, because I had to load it as a PDF until HAR gets it programmed. We, I'm sorry? Do we want to require this when we have it a It is required so on, for on your any, buyer. For either side, no matter who you're representing. No, for the buyer. For I instance. know the buyer has to sign it, but do we require it having a listing? Okay. No. We just want to make sure our buyers are aware of what they're getting into and that they're aware of number 19. I've heard that the 100 year and 500 years are in very unofficial terms and HAR's going to try to get us to move away from that. Is that true? You mean unofficial like they're not. Apparently that's like a nickname or some kind of vernacular we've been using that's not official. Like, no, well, I mean, if you look at the website, it basically states that everyone is in a floodplain, right? It's right. just a matter of are you a zone X, or are you a high risk, or, or low risk? Yeah. It's okay. more of an insurance term. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Is it required for every single buyer of every transaction we do? Going forward, yes. yes. If we represent the buyer, right. yes. only if we represent the buyer. Buy yes. a townhouse or a high rise unit, it's required for every buyer. Well, that's a good point on condos. I didn't put it in the condo contract. I didn't see that to be necessary. So, town has, so it'll be in the one to four. Yeah. But the kind of and new construction. Yeah, and all so the money that's just saying for the flood, but that's that's a demo for high rises. I've had her say, would you send that? For what? Was that? Have y'all not had that? Well, what? Blood thing. When I do high rises, I think Suzanne's. Now, well, wow. typically she's, she may have requested that because if the seller has flood insurance, maybe he lives on the first floor or second floor. Let me floor. tell you, we're actually in a deal right now with the condo, and the buyer did not realize it was in the 100 and it's causing issues. So I mean, I would, it couldn't hurt. I would say let's use it. It's better to overdo yeah. Just so that everybody's aware of what the flood zones are, you know, and where the property, whether it's a condo or a townhouse or a single family, what zone it's in. Yeah. All right. I've already seen a contract come through from another broker that had used this form. It was our listing and their buyer, so I do think it's getting out there and it's starting to be used. Oh, yeah, you showed it to me. Yeah. That's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one other thing we want to just sure. clarify today is making sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to the addendum concerning right to terminate our lenders due to lenders appraisal. Um, so in doing that, I kind of want to start with the third party financing addendum. And at the bottom, if you don't mind scrolling down just a little bit. At the bottom. Whoa. Whoa, go back. Oh, cool. Sorry. Sorry. At the bottom of page one. You have 2A, and 2A deals with the buyer approval. This is strictly about the buyer's credit worthiness. Can the buyer borrow the money? Will the lender borrow, will that lender loan that borrower that money based on the buyer's credit worthiness, okay? Then at the top of page two, you have 2B. So when it comes to the third party financing, you hear 2A, 2B. 2B or 2A has to do with the buyer's credit worthiness. 2B has to do with the property approval. Okay. And this is where the lender, the property has to satisfy the lender's underwriting requirements for the property. That's included but not limited to the appraisal, insurability, possible repairs, etc. Now on 2A, you have that negotiated amount of days that the buyer and seller agree that the buyer needs to obtain their credit worthiness, right? A lot of times we hear 21 days, 30 days, etc. In property approval to B, you have until three days before closing. Okay, so property approval pretty much goes all the way till three days before closing. So, for example, 
if an appraisal came in lower than value or at a value that the lender said, this does not satisfy our underwriting requirements, per 2B, we're used to the buyer being able to terminate under 2B's terms because it didn't make value, right? And then the buyer can terminate the contract with notice of termination. The buyer now has to provide written documentation from the lender stating that either the collateral isn't the right type or that the value wasn't sufficient, okay? A buyer cannot terminate under 2B without something from the lender stating so, okay? And it can't be the buyer's credit worthiness because that's under 2A. And if a buyer wants to terminate under their credit worthiness, then they need to do that within the time frame that's given in 2A, correct? Correct. But in 2B, the buyer can terminate prior to three days before closing and has to provide documentation. Okay, so I'm kind of beating that dead horse for a reason, but everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So those are the basic contractual terms for the third party financing. Now let's talk about the addendum concerning the right to terminate due to lender's appraisal. Okay, so I think everybody has a pretty good handle on one and two, but we wanna talk about three again. So I kinda hate to read this to you, but I'm gonna read it to you just cause I kinda want it to stick in your brain cause sometimes when we hear it read out loud, you go, oh. Um, okay, so thank you. Number three, additional right to terminate. In addition to buyer's right to terminate, under paragraph 2B of the third party financing addendum, buyer may terminate the contract within blank days after the effective date. So in addition to 2B, this number three on this addendum does not negate, modify, remove anything to 2B. This is an additional right to the buyer to terminate. For what okay. reason? Thank you. One, in the effective date, so you have to perform within the date specified, but the appraised value is less than the desired value, whichever you put in here. The buyer has to deliver a copy of the appraisal to the seller, and then the buyer can terminate and the earnest money will be refunded. What is not required here? That was required in 2B. Documentation from the lender. So 2B stays in effect, but this is an additional right for the buyer that in the event the property doesn't appraise at the value the buyer wants it to value at or appraise at, in this amount of days, the buyer can terminate without anything from the lender. So if it's still okay to go to underwriting Correct. as far as the lender is That's concerned, as far as you, the buyer, are concerned, it didn't Correct. meet your minimum. Correct. Mm -hmm. So if you don't mind, go ahead and scroll to the little Wait, thing. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so since we don't get appraisals, I mean, I don't ever have a lender order an appraisal till after the option period, right? Usually. Mm -hmm. uh, because the buyer has to pay for it. Correct. All right. So if you have 21 days for financing approval, 10-day option period, how many days would you, if you're going to use that in the contract, how many days would you recommend? Oh, I mean, that's up to the lender and how quickly <laughs> so they can. We would tie it into the yes. uh, time frame for getting well, financing is the question. Well, okay, so hold on. Okay, right. This needs to be, when does the buyer want to pay for it? At what point in the contract do they want to pay for it? Because otherwise, closing. do what? A closing. No, 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 I'm saying when do they, how far in the contract do they want to get before they're buying an appraisal? Oh. Does that make oh, sense? Yeah, so <laughs> day 11, say day 11. Sure. They're, they're going to order the appraisal, so sure. we get there for, so would you say 15 days or 20 yes, days? Yes, but why, what, tell me what you're doing. Why are I you guess doing what that? I'm saying is if this is another way for a buyer to get out if he doesn't like the appraisal, mm -hmm. you want to give it enough time for him to get the appraisal. Right. So, so then that's up to the lender and how quickly can they get it and when does the buyer want to pay for it? Right, so when you're writing the contract, mm -hmm. what Still would you... Have to put 20 days. 20 one, days? Way, yes. one way would be to tie it into the time frame required to get uh, credit approval. Right. I mean, that, that would be... But you have to realize if you're putting an additional termination the on the contract, that might not be something that the seller finds favorable. Yes. Right. Okay. You with me? Yeah. yeah. Vicki, are you with me on that? 
Okay, because I mean, this is adding an additional contingency to the contract. Okay. But in 2B, <coughs> you can terminate due to appraisal mm -hmm. up to three days before closing, correct? If it does not satisfy the lender's underwriting requirements. So let me finish one second, okay, because this <coughs> might answer some questions. Please scroll down to the next thing. So here's an, okay, go back down a little bit, because you can't see this. There we go. Well, can we fit it? There we go. Okay, <laughs> so here's an example. The sales price of the property is $200,000. Your client is making a $60,000 down payment and is seeking $140,000 in financing. So technically in this situation, the buyer is putting down 30%, okay? So in the event, most lenders loan on 80% of the appraised value, right? right? So the buyer says, well, at 200,000, well, let's go, okay, so the buyer's putting down 30%, but she says, okay, I've created a little bit of wiggle room in my appraisal, if you will, but I'm gonna be psychologically messed up if this house doesn't appraise for what I'm paying for. I don't wanna be told that I'm overpaying. So I, even though the house could appraise for, you know, 180, 190, and I can still get my sure, loan, sure, sure. I wanna have an out in case I'm psychologically messed up. So that's where he or she would put in the amount that she wants the house to appraise for and gives the 30 days in which she has to do all this and make the decision. So then the appraisal comes in at 180. At 180, the lender would be willing to loan up to 144. Well, she was only needing 140. So for the lender's world, it's fine. Okay, so that's why then she could not terminate under 2B because the lender wouldn't be able to give her a letter that says, this doesn't satisfy our underwriting requirements. You can get out, you know, blah, blah, blah. But she wanted to protect herself because she knew she was putting more down and would kind of create this little wiggle room. And so then that's why she implemented number three here. She got the appraisal back within 30 days and now she's chosen to take action in 30 days and she's going to terminate and then she'll get her earnest money back. Can I ask you a question? Yes, ma'am. So if you have a cash deal, how do you do it? Yeah, well, cash deals, this is all that. based on the no, third party right. financing right. addendum. So it. you wouldn't have that. So then this addendum wouldn't come into play. Okay, so what do you do? You could put it under special provisions. The buyer and seller would have to negotiate that in special provisions. Okay. Which is more favorable for our buyer uh, it, as far as how we would structure this? Is just looking at that kind of scenario. Would it be uh, to put the sales price there in, in that two hundred thousand dollars slot and and maximize the time frame. Or I think it depends on how much the buyer's putting down. If the buyer's putting down twenty percent and you confirm with the lender that that's going to be how their loan to value ratio is going to be, then two B covers them. You don't have to give them this extra protection. Right. But if they're putting down more than twenty percent, then this is when you need to be having that conversation with the buyer as to. Mm. You're putting down more money, so you might have some more wiggle room in your appraisal. Are you going to be messed up if this sucker doesn't appraise? Yes. Then let's put in number three. Does that make sense? Because of the amount of equity they will have, that appraisal may not have an impact. Correct. Like in this months. exact example, the house appraised for 180, the sales price was 200, but because she was putting down so much money, the lender was still willing to loan on 80% of 180, which is 144, and she only needed 140. So the lender's like, so we're lender, good. Yeah, their assets go. But now she feels like she's paying 20,000 more for a house than she should because the one person's opinion is <coughs> of her brain. So this would this would also be helpful. Hold on, please. That bill raise my hand. Does yes. it make any sense to use this form from the listing side to control the time that the appraisal is done? Because 2B will always trump this. This and, that, and that's where we wanted to discuss this because this is what we had some confusion thinking that this was modifying the time frame of 2B. It yeah. does not. Mm. If you want to modify the time frame of 2B, then unfortunately buyer and seller are going to have to negotiate that in special provisions. Too sick. Get too sick. Get it all together. Yes, ma'am. When I can, I try to get the appraisal and the. Just um, take it out of the world. All of that, so. Absolutely. Yeah. You can do that. You know, but that, that's when one, your buyer has to be willing yeah. to pay for it. Right. And yeah. two, the lender's got to make so it happen. Because then there's never really a question. You sure. never get into an argument later. Sure. Okay. So, yes. Well, another thing this would be helpful because we've done this a couple of times. Go through the option period with the buyer. 
and they need to make some repairs, $15,000, which the seller will contribute to them. So instead of being $200,000 contract, it's two fifteen. dollars But then the seller says, well, I'm worried I'm going to appraise at two fifteen. dollars So you can use that document. That's right. Yeah. To say two hundred thousand. Well, and a lot of times that's where the partial number two comes into play. Okay. Correct. All right, everybody, good. Yep. All right. Now insurance. Insurance. Okay. Everybody's always wondering about insurance. Insurance is the main uh, of our existence, isn't it? <laughs> and we all have to have it, and we want to know where to get it. Come on up, y'all. Uh, so we have found somebody who is going to offer y'all as independent contractors insurance, and they are going to go over it right now for y'all. I'm waiting for my team to get up here too. Come on, you can see the camera. That's the camera right there. That's who you talk to. Perfect. Kevin, come on up. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> I'm Christina Ma. And you can see my team members right now, Kevin White, right there, the Jersey boy. <laughs> He's up in the woodlands. And then I have Chris Hassel. He's a SFA baseball graduate. And, I just, and I'm a U2 Longhorn, so I know Longhorn's out there. Um, we are your local VIP wealth building consultants. And what we are, we're financial advisors here locally in Houston. And we have a partnership with Martha Turner Sotheby's, and this goes back actually five to seven years. There's a partnership once y'all merged with NRT, y'all got welcomed into a partnership that one of our senior partners up in Chicago, Mark Jacobson, set up a whole network across the nation to negotiate prices for realtors specifically. He is very good at um, getting y'all the best deals that y'all can for disability and long-term care coverage because I know that a lot of y'all don't get to go out there and have go to a company and have benefits already like click a click of a button so what we're here to do is to help you guys navigate through it we are with Prudential but we're brokers so we can go out to any other company to help set up your disability long-term care we can look through the health insurance options with you guys and that's actually what we wanted to focus on today was to go over health insurance 101 i'm going to break it down it might be a little simple for some of y'all but i want to start and have you guys be on the same page for foundation so what we're going to do is i'm going to hop on the computer and then we can show them a website Oh, okay. To show a comparison of what HMO versus PPO is, because a lot of y'all might hear these terms thrown out there, kind of like you yeah, can well, say sure. NRT or y'all have terms too in y'all's field. We also have terms in our field. So I wanted to break it down because y'all might hear, I have an HMO plan option or I want a PPO option, but then you're like, what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, so this is where we'll go through and define the two. So. Out there when you get health insurance, there's gonna be two types of plans. One of them is called a PPO. And a PPO, a PPO plan is just something that just means that you can go to what they call in-network and out-of-network and still have coverage. You have, say that again. you can be in-network or go to out-of-network and you'll still get help and payment from the insurance company. That's PPO. PPO. That's right. PPO. That's PPO. Mm -hmm. That's what I know. does PPO stand for? Preferred provider organization. Preferred Very provider. good. Very good. Gold star business. And so what that does is it just allows you to have more flexibility who you go visit. Mm -hmm. You don't have to check before to say, are you in network? Because I'll go through a little bit more of what PPO is. PPO also, um, you, the only way people in Texas, the entire state of Texas can get PPO is if you are with a group plan. Let me repeat that. The only way you can get a PPO plan is if you start a group or you are a part of a company and you join a group plan. So if you're an individual in Texas, for example, a lot of realtors, and you're out there looking for an individual plan, 
The only flange available are HMO. You're like, okay, Christina, what does HMO even mean? HMO plans, health maintenance organization plans, that means that whenever you get your insurance card, you have to stay in network. So whatever person you go to must be in network. If you go out of network, you get zero, a big fat zero health and insurance company. So this is where we want to be very specific. So whenever you're looking for health insurance options, take a look at the different doctors. If you have any doctors that you love and care for, I always recommend you call before, see if they accept HMO plans, and then they can be your, what they call, primary care physician for you. And then if you go to a specialist, say, Christina, I have a cardiologist that I go to, that's whenever you would have to go to your primary care physician, your main doctor in network, and they have to refer you to your specialist. And they have to be in network. If they're out of network, what do we get? So they have to be in network. That's how an HMO plan works versus a PPO plan. So that's the foundation of the type of plans that we have. Any questions on that? If you're a single <laughs> adult, <laughs> an independent contractor, yep. you have no option except for an HMO. Correct. And that, and then she said, if, you're both <laughs> if you want to go through, you can, okay, so there's different options out there if you don't want to have an Affordable Care Act plan. So you can go out there and get a, what they call a national EPO plan, which is a little different. They'll ask you to do medical questions first and they'll they can exclude pre-existing conditions so what i'm talking about health insurance options i mean affordable care act options so this is the one that the federal government is provides us option yes where do where do the hsa plans tie into all this so That's what health, talking about yeah so health savings account plans are within the different plans that you have and what they are are it's a it's an account that you can pay I'm gonna go into the terms in a little bit because I'm about, I'm about to use some terms that I haven't defined yet for some of y'all what it does is it sets up an account that you can put money into because right now you're young you're healthy you might not go to the doctor as much as people who are older <coughs> so they set up these health savings accounts for people to put money into to use for medical expenses later on that you get to invest grow it tax deferred and tax free and when you use it you get to use it for medical purposes so for young people that's great because we're not going to the doctor as often you see the crowd you're looking at Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, the person that came from I want to address it. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to say for individual accounts, you can form um, your own business and be a sole person yes. and have medical coverage that's in, um, you know, covered by whatever you want to call it, affordable care. Act. So it's not that's not completely correct. You mean have a PPO? You can have a PPO. If you form a group, right? right? But, but, but a group can be you. So that's what's confusing. It didn't used to just be you, but it can just be I thought you. a group has to be you and one other person. It used, used to be. Employee. It used to be. So when did that change? Several years ago. Nonetheless, it's expensive to do, right? It, it depends how you set up. You no, know, I know for sure because I've been doing it. I mean, and I have advice from different people on it. So you have to be a group. You can be yourself. You have to be a business entity. Mm -hmm. And that, so just FYI, and you, you have, have to have another person. You do no. not have to have another person. <laughs> is it also an affordable care act? Yes. It yes. Okay. Then we can talk afterwards because of the brokers that I talk to, they I specifically ask them to find it has to be an employer, and then you have to have one employee who cannot be a spouse. It can be a parent. It can be a child. It has to be one W two employee who works for you for 30 plus hours, 30 more hours in one. So that's the way that... That's how it was when it was set up originally, and that was the same information I got, but that changed pretty soon. Are you incorporated? After. Am I incorporated? Yes. You, okay. Yes. If you're an entity, which is what I said, that's different. So an entity doesn't have to have the close employee, it can be you. Okay. So that, I can't get the questions. Can you go through your uh, your presentation, and then we can ask questions afterwards?
Yes, that'll be what we And then we have the other page. So this is the definitions. The definitions of different terms that we use is whenever you look on the health insurance websites and you start searching around, you'll see HMO or PPO. Most of, if you're an individual, it'll be HMO. And then you'll see deductibles, the top <laughs> right here. Deductible, when you see that term, what that means is how much that you have to pay out of pocket before the insurance company will help you pay money. So for example, if the deductible says 1,000 right here, you have to go to the doctor, you have to pay for an x-ray, you pay up to $1,000, and then you hit the deductible. So once I spend $1,000, I hit my deductible, and then what happens is then we have coinsurance. So coinsurance just means once you've hit your deductible, they only give you a percentage. This example is a 20%, 2080. So that means I pay 20%, the insurance company pays 80%. So once I spend $1,000 out of my own pocket, and then I use another $100 to go to get an x-ray, it's not cost $100, but I go get an x-ray, I pay $20, the insurance company pays $80. So then what happens is you keep going, let's say I get into a car accident, I break my leg, the medical, I have to get surgery and all that. So let's scroll down to the second page. And then you'll see an out-of-pocket maximum. Right here, out-of-pocket limit. So this means that if something catastrophic happens, what's the most that I need to pay out-of-pocket? So even though I'm still pay, only paying 20% because I hit my $1,000 deductible, that amount until my out-of-pocket max limit is, in this example, let's just say $7,000. So between my $1,000 to $7,000, I have to pay out-of-pocket $7,000 before I hit my max. Once I hit my max, everything else is covered. And, that's, and then that rolls over the next year, you start back over. The next year, you start back over. Yes. So for health insurance, if you know you need to get something done, I always try to I always try to plan it to get it all knocked out at the beginning of the year. Everything else will be covered. When I got my ankle surgery done, oh, it's uh, you learn a lot about health insurance once you go through it. Yeah. All the bills that come through three weeks after, five weeks after, ten weeks after, you're like, how did, where did these bills come from? But yes. So this is what the main topics that you'll see whenever you look over health insurance. So those are the main terms that you'll see. And then that way you understand what type of coverage am I getting. Because when you look at different plans, you'll hear terms like bronze, silver, and then gold. The bronze plans are going to be less expensive, but with higher deductibles. So that means you have to pay out more pocket first. You're paying lower premiums, but you're dishing out more out of your own pocket. The silver ones are the in-between, medium deductibles, and then medium premium prices. And then the gold ones are going to be higher premium costs, but lower deductibles. And then so you don't have to pay as much out of pocket. Yeah, so it depends. In your situation, how's my cash flow? Am I a good saver? And this is where it's very individualized. And so if you all have any questions, the best advice that I have is, Christina, I only remember one thing that you told me. That's why you should come talk to me, Kevin and Chris, because we can get to know your family situation and see what makes the most sense and then go from there. It's very similar to whenever people are asking me all about houses, homes, and you're like, oh, there's all these terms, and it's like them drinking out a water hose, but that's why they have you. That's also why you have us, so that we can sit with y'all one-on-one -on -one and figure this out. So the other thing that I wanted to let you guys know too is that with this, we can go to a very helpful website called ehealth.com backslash MJA. And this website will allow you to browse different options for your health insurance. MJ. Backslash MJA. This is the website that's set up for all of y'all as agents. Yeah. We make it very user friendly for y'all. Yeah, um, so this sure. is definitely a good website to write down, and also this step that we're It'll come in your minutes. Yeah. Okay. You'll get it in your minutes. Okay. 
So this is helpful. I like this website over the healthcare.gov. Healthcare.gov, y'all can go on there and search. Um, the downside to that is you have to give them more personal information and then they start sending you emails and all this wonderful stuff that you'll love, all the spam mail. Yes. This website doesn't do that when you search for individual health insurance. Um, and what I'll do is I'll walk you through what to do. So you can see you typed it in, you go to health insurance, and then individual family health insurance. And I'll bring you to this website where you put in your zip code, 77027. We're gonna say we're individual because I'll show you guys what it looks like to shop on an on individual one. You can do a 30 year old, or no, 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 let's do a 55 year old. <laughs> I ran all the different numbers for you guys so that y'all have a range, an idea of what the health insurance costs. That's 60, 63. <laughs> and then if y'all, I don't think a lot of y'all will qualify for this, but if y'all are in a lower income tax bracket, you could qualify for a subsidy. This also helps you calculate it. Yes. For individual health insurance, you don't need to do that. Just individual? Yes, just individual. For individual health insurance, right now, if y'all do not have coverage in place, you'll have to wait until November to apply for coverage for January 1st of 2020. So if you currently do not have coverage through a spouse, a group coverage, or your own group that you set up, you have to wait until November 15th to see what prices are for the new times and then sign up January 1st of 2020. So that's the time frame. If y'all are looking to set it up for yourself, that's where we can set it up at any time. So this is for a 55 year old. You can see the bronze plan, $40 office visit, 6,000 deductible. So we're already seeing those terms that I talked about earlier. So you have to pay with that means you have to pay out of pocket that much before the benefits start. And it's gonna be, you can see the range of prices, $25. And these prices are locked in by the government and the insurance companies talk at the beginning of the year, negotiate it, and then they send it out. There's no way around it, there's no discounts. This is what's available to everyone and anyone. It's not just, mm -hmm. like, it's, our hands are tight. If we could help you guys out, we would. What we can do is help you navigate what's available. So that's what a 55 year old looks like. It ranges from $580 a month to $1,051, from bronze to gold, all the way to gold. And we'll see the color next. Yeah, so this is a silver plan, and the lighter yellow is the gold plan. So you can see how the deductible. Yeah. So they're just all structured in a, diff, a variety of ways, right? Yes. As far correct. as deductibles and total out of pocket, etc. Copays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then because this is an HMO plan, remember the very important thing is to find find my find doctors. Mm -hmm. Click on that. See if the doctor that you like and go to is available in network. That's with HMO. So do different HMO plans have different doctors? Or different they... networks. So because a lot of these are Blue Cross Blue Shield, um, be it'll be the same depending on the level too. So bronze ones might have different doctors, silver ones might have different doctors, gold ones might have different so doctors. So if you're poor, you get the worst doctors. Did you exactly. get that? Exactly. Yeah. Who created this system? Who? <laughs> 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 affordable care is kind of pushed it on and then this is what the states have come out with. Um, before there used to be more carriers on, Texas used to have PPO plans. Um, PPO plans got nixed out a few years ago and that's why we only have HMO plans available for individuals. Yes, um, a lot of heartache that y'all go through. And then if you need prescription, prescription coverages as well, the silver and platinum ones and gold ones cover that. So you can always check to see if they have drug coverage on there. 
So I ran, um, I wanted to give you guys an idea of the range for the different ages. So if you're 30 years old, single, HMO, Blue Cross Blue Shield rated from $300 to $500. A 40-year-old with spouse and two kids ranges $870 to $1480 a month. And then a 55-year-old without an assistant, HMO, $580 to $1051 per month. Yeah. So what if we want to do, like, husband has their own, and I'm on his, and then I'm like, okay, well, I can find something different on here. We have a child, and I'll keep them on his plan, <clears throat> for example. So could I go in and say that I, like, how do I file myself as an individual, as a single? Like, how does that work? If you wanted to go into parenting, <clears throat> to have my yeah. own, and it's just the same. Yeah, it would be just the same. So you would say for yourself, your birthday. If you wanted your kid on yours or your husband. Oh, right. So it yeah. just depends on however. It just depends on how you're and then going off of that too, uh, we have gotten asked that it's a little bit out of the norm, but hey, my spouse and I, we have coverage. We're looking for health insurance for our child. They can go out, they can get health insurance for their child, um, for their brother, for a parent, for any immediate family members. So this is not just limited to you yourself as an agent. So anyone can hop on this. Everything that I showed you guys is on the beautiful worldwide web. So. What if you did type um, 86 in there? Or 84? What if you mean, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is the overview of the health insurance that we have. Um, I wanted to find the terms for you guys, let you know what's available. Um, that's gold. That's, that's, this is fraud. Um, so gold is going to be the yellow. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just going to tell this little high. It's really high. Wow. Really high. So the monthly rate went down. Still stopped. You want a low deductible. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. That is zero deductible. It just seems like it kind of did that automatically. This is a younger person. Yeah. So in the yeah. Yes, yes. I think that's discriminatory. Oh, yes. It is. I agree. <laughs> yes, it, it is. It's based on age purely. So if you have yourself and a young assistant, it's going to be the age of the assistant in your age. So right. This is so where it's... it just depends on age health insurance. Until you all get to 65 and can sign up for Medicare, that's where we can help you guys. That's the way to go. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else that I need to cover for you guys. So for that age group, it was basically 330 to what was the highest? Yeah. Okay. Again, if y'all have any questions, this was a little overwhelming. Come talk to us. Check that off on the I'm interested sheet so we know exactly what y'all are looking for. On the other areas that we do work with y'all, I always encourage y'all to take a look at what the options are so you know what you're saying no to. And then set IRAs or retirement as well. So we also do investments for y'all's retirement. Very exciting for us too. So we'll help you guys set that up. Good news is we're close by. We're right down the street over the park towers. So whoever wants to set the time to meet, we can either come here or you guys can come to our office. It's in walking distance. Yeah, so the big thing we wanted to do today was to show that we have a relationship with another group of brokers and <clears throat> healthcare, you're not gonna get your answer today, but just know that we've partnered with someone and so healthcare is even if even if you know you have your age, there's thirteen different plans to choose from. So the best thing to do is if you need to get health insurance, to contact them and then set up an appointment and sit down and go through the whole thing. Because it's it's a million different options and it's really hard to navigate and everything. So we just wanted to show you that, you know, there are some options if you're out there looking. Can we just email these to you? We'll, we'll come around and collect them. So please okay. put down um, your name, phone number, email. What's the best way to contact y'all? Because when I'm calling realtors all day, and then they say, oh, well, what, Kevin, why don't you email me or why don't you text me? And I'm calling them all day. The last thing you guys want or more, I tell them what I'm calling them. Um, and and then, I did mention he's from Jersey, so he does have a 908. Yeah, I've, I've been through it all. I've, I've called people like 15 times and they were like, oh, this is you? And they blocked me, right? 
Um, one of the most common, commonly asked questions we get asked is, well, how much does it cost to meet with y'all? Uh, Martha Turner picks up the cost for y'all, so there's no cost to meet. Okay. Does that make it doesn't make sense. I was gonna say does make sense. No, it does not make sense. Now you've got a contact to call and just set up an appointment and go talk to us and see what you can do. Okay? Any other questions? Are you out of here? Ready to sell. Okay, good. Go sell a house. Thank y'all. Have a great day. Bye everybody. Bye on the camera. <laughs> Y'all have a great day. Thanks. Next gen is right now. So if you're young, you stay right here.